Today, let's talk about something from the, the cheap and cheerful side of the fountain pen community. And that's the Moonman Q1. This little guy has been getting quite a bit of attention um, within the community these days. And I think for good reason. I think it's a, it's a fun little pen. But before we talk about the Q1, let's address the elephant in the room, which is the Tombow egg, um, which is this black pen you see on the right. As you can see, to call the Moon Man a lookalike of the egg would be a, a big understatement. I think the, the Moon Man is almost a carbon copy of the Tombow pen. So whether you're okay or not with that type of thing, um, I'll leave that up to you. But I do want to talk about a couple of the differences between the Tombow and the Moon Man. The, the first difference that I noticed is that the Tombow feels like um, a lighter or thinner, more brittle plastic. Um, it feels, it doesn't feel like the most robust pen. It feels very, very light. Um, and maybe it's just because of the age, but this plastic doesn't give me the confidence that this is a really robust pen. Um, and I mentioned the age. The Tombow has been out of production for a long time, maybe 20 plus years. So actually finding one um, in good shape for a reasonable price, reasonable prices is getting to be more and more challenging um, these days. The other thing about the Tombow is that it, it uses a snap cap. Um, and I think the combination of the, the pen being kind of stubby and, and the, the cap being tight it's actually not the easiest thing to get on and off. So if, you, um, if I demonstrate, geez, that's uh, more difficult than I realized. So as you can see, not the easiest thing to get, get, on, um, get on and off. Once you get the cap off, you realize that the last major difference between these pens, and that is that the Tombow uses this pro proprietary stubby little nib. Um, I think it's made by either Sailor or, or Platinum. But aside from the fact that it looks kind of cool, it's nothing special in terms of the writing experience. Um, and as you can see, mine is starting to, to corrode a bit. Um, so I'm not sure if this is a particularly high quality nib either. Um, but basically for, for those reasons, you know, the, the fact that the, the plastic doesn't feel extremely robust. The pen, the cap is really difficult to use um, from a you know everyday writing perspective and, and the nib is nothing special. I actually don't use I, I don't use this pen um, to write with at all. It just sits around um, the desk as more of a conversation piece and just just a cool item to have around. But the Moon Man on the other hand I wouldn't say that the plastic is nice or luxurious, but it is thick. It feels very, very sturdy. Um, you probably hear that sound. It's, it's a very robustly made pen. Um, my favorite feature of the Moon Man compared to the Tombow is the fact that it has this screw-on cap. I don't normally have a strong preference of um, screw on versus snap caps in pens. I tend to like whatever works better with that particular design, um, design of the pen. But in this case, because of the stubby nature of the pen, this screw on cap works so much nicer than the snap cap in the Tombow. Um, and the, the other difference, the, the last difference, main difference between the pens is that the Tombow use that proprietary nib and this Moon Man uses a standard number size number six size nib which is much more livable from a um, much more livable much more usable from a writing experience um, and you get the added benefit of being able to find interesting nibs like this Jin Hao bent nib and it will just fit right on so I'll show you a bit about how this writes. Um, but before we do that, I wanted to compare this 
with another pen in the $20 price range that has a bent nib, and that is this Sailor. So before we talk about the Sailor, when was the last time you heard that the other option in the inexpensive pen category was a Sailor? Um, I thought that was you know rather interesting, but this Sailor, I believe this was $19 on, on Amazon, also comes with a fude nib or a bent nib. Um, I don't know what this this sailor is called, the 1911 cheap or, or something, but it's you know nothing special, plastic pen with um, a bent nib. But the reason I wanted to bring this pen up is because for the same price, I actually think the Moon Man offers more value um, in terms of just fun and in terms of the better writing experience. This Sailor, it feels like a cheap Sailor. You know, it feels like it, it, the pen is letting you know that you are on the bottom of the, the, the Sailor product line. You know, the nib is extremely cheap. Um, you can see the, the stamping of the Sailor logo. It just, it, you know, looks terrible. The nib itself, even though I know Sailor makes amazing um, 14 karat and do they make 14 karat? I'm not sure, but at, at least they make they make 21 karat um, Fude nibs that um, I know are, are supposed to be amazing. Um, you know, I, I don't own one of those, but this steel $19 Fude nib, I can assure you is nothing special. Uh, in terms of the Moon Man, the bent nib um, on this is actually easier to write with on um, from a everyday writing perspective. And that's something that I wanted to show you because it's something that I wouldn't have expected when I, when I first got this pen and when I tried writing with it. So let's bring out my trusty Stology notebook. Um, and let's waste some paper here because I've been using this notebook for, for three months and I'm getting kind of bored of it and trying to trying to get to the end of it. Um, but when, when you see a nib like this, um, I would have expected it to write very wide, um, to have a very wide line regardless of how you hold it. But as you can see, when you, when you post the pen and you write with a regular angle, the nib actually writes fairly normal, which I found this really interesting. Um, the, the, the page wasn't really um, flat here, so that, that caused a bit of the, um, the ink bubble there. Um, but you can write fairly easily with a nib like this, which that really, really surprised me. The other surprise is that, um, I know many of you probably know if you turn this bent nib upside down, you get a fine line. Because of the shape of the nib and the fact that there's not really any tipping material here, I thought it would just be a miserable experience to write upside down, but it's not. So if you write upside down, you get a fairly interesting, you get a fairly normal fine line and, and the, the feedback that you get is not particularly strong. It just feels like a normal a normal fine, which I think is interesting. I thought I wouldn't have been expected. But the coolest thing about the bent nib is when you use a lower angle. And for that you actually have to um, unpost the pen because otherwise when you when you try to write at this angle the, the cap just falls off. Um, but when you write a little bit at a at a lower angle, I don't know what I'm writing, but hopefully you can see the angle or the the line that it puts out is really quite cool. Um, you get an architect nib effect, which is the vertical line is thinner than the horizontal line. So 
This is architect. This it behaves a lot like an architect nib. And this when you when you hold it at this angle, it puts out a really, really, really wide line. Which, you know, you can have fun just playing around, wasting paper. Um, anyway. So bottom line, is the Moon Man Q1 worth $20? Um, if you're not okay with the fact that it looks like a Tombow A, then no. Um, but if you are okay with that, I can't really think of anything else that is this much fun for, for $20. I'm, I'm really glad that this is available in the market, um, especially for, for such a cheap price. The only caveat I will say is, um, you know, it, if you if, if you care, um, this pen is like twelve dollars in its home country. Um, that that's approximately what I see it for um, online and for resellers across Asia. You know, if that bothers you, so be it. But you know, we we live here, and <laughs> you know, this pen costs twenty dollars here. So is it worth twenty dollars to me? Absolutely. Um, but with the caveat of, you know, if you're okay with how it looks compared to the Tombow, um, I think this pen is a lot of fun for the money. Cool. Thanks for watching.